Hey folks, today I'm going to teach you everything you need to get started with using Microsoft OneNote. Coming up next on Tech Talk America. Hey folks, and welcome to the class. When it comes to note-taking software, there are a lot of different options to choose from, and the best solution for you may be very different for someone else. For example, some people, when they're taking notes, really like the idea of using a stylus, whereas other people prefer to use a keyboard. Part of the reason why I'm a big fan of Microsoft OneNote is because it combines the best of both worlds, allowing users to easily switch back and forth between using a keyboard or a stylus. It runs on both Mac and Windows, it's completely free, that is unless you have an absolutely insane amount of notes, and unlike most note-taking applications, Microsoft OneNote is non-linear meaning there is no edge of the page. You can type wherever you want and not just necessarily on the line. In fact, there are no lines, but I find it really helpful to add them back. And yes, I will teach you how to do that later on. Today's video is sponsored by our friends at InVideo. If you are a small business looking for a simple solution to create online videos to advertise your business, you should check out InVideo.io. This web-based video editor gives you access to over 4,000 templates and includes everything you need to start making a video, including stock footage and music. I have an entire class on how to use InVideo, which you will find down below in the video description, and you can save a whopping 50% off any subscription just by using promo code TECHTALK50. Let's start today's class by discussing the hierarchy of OneNote. At the very top level, we have notebooks. So for example, you could have a notebook for your recipes, another for your upcoming episode of your podcast, and one for that future vacation you're gonna take the second this pandemic is over. Inside each of your notebooks, you can create sections. So for example, in my notebook of recipes, I might have a different section for each type of cuisine. If you do need an extra layer of organization, you can also right click in this area to reveal the option to create a section group. So let's say I wanna create a section group for the sauces, and then inside I'll create a subsection for cream-based, one for tomato-based, etc. On the bottom level, we have pages. So for example, that would be where you would place the individual recipes. Now you can actually add two additional levels referred to as a sub-page and a sub-sub-page. Those are the kinds that are extra kinky. To make a page a sub-page, just right-click on it and then select Make Sub-Page. I'm now gonna create a new page so that I can start to walk you through some of the different tools that you'll find here in OneNote. Now, I'm gonna be teaching today's class from a combination of my Mac and my iPad Pro. So if you're following along at home, there may be some parts of this presentation that might look slightly different based on what device you're using, but for the most part, all the tools are the same. At the top left, we have a search bar which allows me to search through all of my notebooks, not just the one that I'm currently in. Now you can also use this feature to search for tags that have been placed in different documents, and we're gonna cover how to do that in just a minute. One of the features in OneNote that I absolutely love is a feature called OCR, which stands for Optical Character Recognition. What this means is if I take a photo of a document, OneNote is able to recognize that image of text as text, which lets you do some pretty cool things later on. So for example, let's say I'm trying to locate my Mark Bittman recipe for crispy potatoes. Seriously, they're the best. I can just search for crispy potatoes and it's able to find it even though the only place where those words appear are in the photo of the recipe. Moving to the top right, this bell icon is where you'll see any notifications and you'll really use this feature if you decide to collaborate with others on one of your notebooks. And speaking of that, that's what this icon is for. You can either invite someone else to collaborate on your notebook, or if you want to only share one specific page, you can attach it as a PDF through this option. This gear icon you'll only find on the iPad version, otherwise all of these settings are located in preferences. And the one thing that I wanted to point out, which is a brand new feature, is absolutely perfect for teachers. Uh, the name of that feature is called Class Notebook. And when I enable this feature, you'll see that a new notebook appears with a whole bunch of options that you don't get in a normal notebook. For example, you can distribute a document to a group of people. You can also review your students' homework and a lot more features. If you need any more information about how to use the new class notebook feature, I will be happy to include some links to resources down below in the video description. If you're using a tablet, this icon at the top right will hide or reveal the navigation menu, which is really nice when you're using a smaller screen. Let's now begin to go through the different menus, starting with the home menu. 
Here you'll find the basic text and formatting options that you'd expect to find in pretty much any note-taking software. Here at the right, you'll find a variety of different ways that you can tag your pages. Now this feature can be useful when trying to locate pages in different notebooks, but honestly, how well this feature works for you may greatly vary depending on what types of devices you're using. Now, don't get me wrong, I still love OneNote, but the tags feature is one of these features that could definitely be improved in my opinion, simply by streamlining the options across all devices. For example, while you can create custom tags on the desktop version of OneNote, those tags do not sync to mobile. And even the default tags are inconsistent depending on what types of devices you're using. For example, these are the tagging options on the iPad. And as you can see here, there's quite a few of them. And frankly, many of these could actually be very, very handy. But then when we switch over to the Mac version, we can only choose from these options. Again, I love this app, but in this one area, Microsoft, you could really stand to improve this app, in my opinion. Let's now go over the Insert tab, and here you're gonna find some really helpful tools, including the ability to use the camera on your device as a scanner. While you can use this feature to capture any type of document, I wanted to give you an example of how I think anyone can benefit from this feature. Now, I'm gonna guess that a lot of you out there have old recipes and maybe even some old letters, that have been passed down to you from generation to generation. A fire or a flood can destroy all of that in a moment. And this is a really easy to not only digitize that data, but also gives you the ability to organize it at the same time. Now, when you tap on the camera icon, you'll see that we can choose between taking a photo, a document, or a whiteboard. Then just hold up your camera to the document and tap to take a photo. Another tool that can be very handy is the audio tool. This uses the microphone on your device to allow you to create a quick dictation which will be saved inside of your document. That's where Bob Woodward filled up his storage. We're gonna skip over a few of these other tools just so that we can focus on the good stuff. And so what we're gonna do now is switch over to the draw menu. And this is the menu that you'll want to familiarize yourself if you like using a stylus like the Apple Pencil, which I have to say I really enjoy even though my writing is terrible. Now, right off the bat, I want you to notice that the options to switch back and forth between text and drawing modes are at opposite sides of this menu. The lasso select tool is great anytime you need to move stuff around. So I can just use this tool, draw a circle around my text, and now if I need to move it to a different part of the document, I can just drag it and drop it there. All of your basic shapes you can find right here. This ink to shape tool makes it so that if I try to draw a circle, which God knows will not be perfect, it will automatically correct it into a true circle. This also works with other shapes. Switching over to the view menu, you'll find the option for spell check. This right here will switch the background back and forth between light mode and dark mode. This immersive reading feature will eliminate all distractions, fill the entire page, and it even contains an option where it will read all of the text out loud. Now this feature also works with scan documents, and for that reason, I think this could be potentially a really handy tool for parents as well as the disabled community. For those of you who do enjoy using a stylus, you might want to consider changing the paper style to add lines to your document. I know at least for me, this is very helpful. If there are any parts of your notebook that you would like to secure with a password, you can add that option here. Just be aware that you can only add a password to a section, not an individual page. Now that we've covered the majority of OneNote, I would like to give you a few more quick tips to help improve your productivity. For those of you who use Google Chrome, you will definitely want to install the OneNote Web Clipper. This feature makes it super easy to save content directly from a website into a OneNote document. You can choose between saving the entire page, a selected region, article mode, which is personally my favorite, and finally there is an option where you can save a bookmark so it just copies the URL. Now, for those of you who do not use Google Chrome but still have a Mac, you might want to consider checking out my video from last week, which is all about the different ways that you can take a screenshot. Another tool that I wanted to recommend just because it works so well with OneNote is a free app called CopyClip. This app gives you full access to your Mac's clipboard history. So for example, if you don't need what you just copied, but you need what you copied a couple of copies ago, CopyClip lets you do that. Now for those of you out there who are on a Windows computer, you actually have a built-in way to do this, provided you're on, I believe it's Windows 10. So all you need to do is press the Windows key and the letter V on your keyboard to access everything. One of the things I had to include in this video is how to delete a notebook. 
Don't ask me why, this is the third time I've taught this class on Microsoft OneNote in the eight years that I've had my YouTube channel, and in eight years they have never fixed this feature. It is ridiculously difficult to delete a notebook. And the answer for how to do it is to go to OneNote.com on your browser, sign in, and then click here where it says Manage and Delete. So what's your favorite feature built into Microsoft OneNote? Let me know about it down below in the comments section. And finally, before we go, I hope you'll take a quick moment to check out my brand new podcast called The Creative Source. The way that I've come to describe it is it's a little bit like inside the actor's studio, but for all different types of creative professionals. New episodes drop every Monday, and we've got some really cool guests coming up. I'll put links to everything down below, and I hope you'll check it out. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. This is David Acox with Tech Talk America. Class dismissed.